Thank you all so much. My name is Sarah Gonzalez. I'm currently a PhD student at the University of California in Santa Cruz. And my project here in Chile will be uh, the people and the sea towards sustainable management of Chilean kelp forests. So this is a kelp forest. They're fabulous habitats. They occur all around the world in the ocean. And uh, much like terrestrial forests, they're really kind of incredible hubs of biodiversity. They provide habitat for lots of ecologically as well as commercially important fish species and marine invertebrates. For these animals, they provide refuge from predators as well as from harsh wave action. So in this way, they also serve as ecosystem <coughs> engineers by attenuating wave velocity and creating a lower flow environment inside the forest. There are also important carbon sinks, taking up CO2 that would otherwise be in the atmosphere. And for the focus of my talk today, I'm going to be looking at kelp forests as a natural resource, um, so humans harvest them. And kelp harvesting in Chile historically had been done by collecting kelp off the beach that washed up naturally through storm events, or just general waves um, ripping the kelp and delivering it to the shore. But in the past decade or so, with increased demand for alginic acid and abalone food, which are both um, uh, resources obtained from kelp, uh, with increased demand for these resources, there's been more intensive harvesting. So uh, fishermen will extract kelp from underwater. And so we're not quite sure what this more intensive harvesting effect will have on ecological functions as well as fisheries um, that depend on fish that use these kelp forest habitats. So in Chile, um, kelp harvesting is managed by local fishermen, each has their own territory. And there are no real standardized harvesting protocols, so the type and intensity of, of kelp harvesting kind of varies uh, depending on the individual fishermen. There are two main types of kelp that are harvested here in Chile. So Lasonia and Macrocystis are both different genera of brown algae kelp. Lasonia is mainly used, um, harvested for alginic acid, which is extracted from the kelp and used in all kinds of things like gels and cosmetics, shampoos. Um, it's also sometimes consumed uh, by humans as food. And then macrocystis is typically harvested to use as abalone feed. So abalone don't grow naturally in Chile, but they are farmed and the macrocystis is used to feed them. And so this graph, this map here just shows the range of different Lusonia and Macrocystis species. So they occur all along the coast, and where I'll be focusing my study of research is in this central northern part of Chile, um, where most of the species occur. So to answer this, uh, or tackle this problem of sustainable management of kelp forests, I'm coming at a couple different angles. I'm interested in the ecological aspects. So how does kelp harvesting affect fish and invertebrate recruitment in the ocean? I'm also interested in the uh, role that kelp plays on sandy beaches on shore. So how does the presence of kelp rack, that washed up kelp, influence sandy beach communities? And then in addition to these ecological aspects, I'm interested in the social dynamics associated with kelp harvesting. So what is the culture of scientific knowledge among Chilean fishermen? In order to answer these questions, I'll be doing a combination of field measurements, laboratory experiments, and interviews with the local fishermen. I'll be based out of the um, Estación Costera de Investigaciones Marinas in Las Cruces, and this is the marine field station for the Pontificia Universidad Católica in Santiago. So Las Cruces is just a couple hours bus ride from here, right on the coast. And so this first question, how do fish and invertebrates respond to the removal of kelp? Um, I'll be Working with um, the, a laboratory at the Estación Costera, uh, Miriam Fernandez's lab. And so that lab has already done a lot of work um, looking at the effects of kelp harvesting in the ocean on these animals and the way they measure recruitment for the number of new um, species or new individuals. They deploy these tuffy pads, which serve as an artificial substrate in, um, in the ocean. And they kind of mimic the complexity of the kelp, that habitat. These are actually kind of like kitchen scrubbers. But they're really useful for recruiting animals such as snails, keyhole limpets, and crabs. Well, um, their larvae will recruit to this substrate. So we can deploy these in the ocean, take them out, rinse them off in the lab, and then count and identify the different species. And for animals like fish, we'll actually use these different type, similar idea, but just much larger net, these smurfs or standard monitoring <laughs> units for recruitment of reef fishes. So that's an example of that there. 
I'll also be doing some laboratory experiments to look at, um, again, this change in flow. So these kelp forests, as I mentioned, help attenuate wave velocity. And so I'm interested in looking at how uh, fish and invertebrates will respond to changes in flow and turbulence. So we'll be using a flow chamber um, a flume to stimulate different flow complexities outside the kelp in low densities, medium densities, and high densities, and looking at how these adults and larvae behave. So this next question, how does the presence of kelp rack influence sandy beach communities? The first thing I'm going to need to do is identify different wave exposed beaches along the coast um, in areas varying in intensity of kelp harvesting. I'm going to be estimating the amount of kelp rack biomass that washes up on the, the shore and the percent cover on the beach. So to do this, I'll be taking photos, perhaps um, experimentally clearing areas and seeing how quickly new kelp um, reaches the shore. I'll be measuring sandy beach invertebrates by taking sand cores in um, kind of vertical transects perpendicular to the ocean. So I'll go along, dig out some cores, sieve them through a mesh, and then identify little um, crabs and isopods, those kind of animals that you see hurriedly scurrying into the water as the tide, or into the sand as the tide goes out. And I'm also really interested in multiple trophic levels. So not only looking at the effect of kelp not only on the animals that directly eat it, like invertebrates, but then animals that eat those invertebrates, like shorebirds. So I'm hoping to um, do some bird censuses where I'll be sitting there with my binoculars, counting <laughs> the different shorebirds and species that I see. Okay. And so again, this cultural aspect, what is the culture of scientific knowledge among Chilean fishermen? I'll be working with Miriam Fernandez and others to uh, get connections and um, find out fishermen I can interview, uh, asking them questions like, when do you harvest kelp and how much do you harvest? Have you ever changed the way in which you harvest kelp? What does sustainability and conservation mean to you? What do you value about the kelp forest? And what types of fish or invertebrates have you noticed near on the kelp? So you're getting a sense of the um, ways that the fishermen make decisions about how to harvest kelp and what they notice about the effects may have on the ecology of the habitat. And looking ahead, some of the outcomes I hope to achieve with my Fulbright project will be working towards course management of Chilean kelp forests, understanding the role of kelp both in the ocean subtitally as well as on shore on the sandy beaches, looking at com possible comparative studies with similar systems, like at my home institution in California, as well as um, using this framework to help inform global management uh, of global kelp strat management strategies since kelp harvesting is done all around the world. And I'm really interested in also fostering this exchange of values between scientists and fishermen, all working towards this common goal of um, having this kelp resource there for a long time. And I will take any questions you have. whether or not um, the local fishermen have different names for um, some of the kelps or all the little invertebrates that... Different names of like local the names. fishermen. You know how maybe here you have your scientific name and right. we have the English names. Right, right. Like what if there's a nickname? Like so definitely some of them have uh, common names. I don't know if they vary between individual fishermen. Um, I'm not sure about that, so I guess I'll find out. <laughs> but I know at least um, the the terms that the researchers at the marine lab use local like terms. Um, okay. Cool. Perhaps those are consistent along the coast. Yes. What kind of challenges do you think you're going to encounter during your field work? Oh, plenty. So <laughs> the whole um, the whole sandy beach community stuff is actually pretty. Um, it's not really the expertise of the lab I'm working with, so I'll kind of just be seeing what works, going out there, sort of exploratory. There haven't been many uh, studies on sandy beach communities in this part of Chile. There's been more in the south, um, so I'll be um, interested to see how that goes. Mm -hmm. And um, with interviewing the fishermen, um, so I'm still working out the kinds of questions I might ask and what sort of format it would be like a survey or more like 
short answer, open-ended kind of question. So I'll be working with um, the researchers at the Miriam and her other people in that lab um, to figure out the best way to do that. Um, yeah, and then all sorts of other unpredictable things with field work. Who knows what's going to happen. But I'm hoping at least some of these things will get accomplished. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, my question is uh, in regards to the similarities between, uh, because you start, you're, you're starting in California, right? Yes. Which is a similar ecosystem in terms of the Definitely. environment which mm -hmm. here. And so the first question is uh, how similar uh, our Chilean um, ecosystem is to the one you have in California? Mm -hmm. And why did, you, why did you choose Chile to, to conduct the research? Great question. So this is my first time in Chile, so I can't speak from personal experience what the kelp forests are like. Um, and I also just started my program in California, so I've only lived there for about six months. But based on what I've read and experienced and uh, talked to professors, the systems are extremely similar. Um, same types of species, same types of upwellings and currents, um, and so I'm expecting to see a lot of similarities. And um, kelp harvesting is not is common in California. They do often groom the kelp off the beaches, kind of more for aesthetic purposes. So in that sense, that might be sort of similar to the harvesting off the beach here. Um, so yeah, I'm expecting to see a lot of similarities, but I guess different local species, just depending on um, habitat. And your second question was, why Chile? So I was really lucky to um, find this connection with Miriam Fernandez, who I didn't know at all uh, before I emailed her. I was just sort of reading up on papers about kelp and marine ecology, and I saw her name on a paper, and saw she was at the University of Chile, and emailed her, and then sort of built the project off of that. And I'm really excited to um, get involved with their ongoing research and, and hopefully contribute to what they're doing. Great. I, um, yeah. A comment, maybe um, fish markets is a good place to get local names, because there's a wide oh, range great. of diversity of local names. Chayuyo and sometimes difficult to spell and such. Great, thank you so much for that.